question that I would possibly ask Roy, what would be the uh, the hardest system that he's ever been you know, in? I mean, I'd say mine probably was Wandsworth. It's an extremely sore gaff. I've seen uh, proper, proper men buckle in there, grown, grown men, and everyone has a breaking point. And Roy's done an awful lot of prison. You know, and he's done, he's done a lot of the systems. And uh, you're up against a lot of pricks, you know what I mean? You know, whether it be cons or whether it be screws. So I would just like to ask him, you know, what was the hardest system? And, you know, at the end of the day, we all know that Roy come out trumps, as he normally does. So we salute you, Roy, and God bless you. Well, it would have been Wandsworth, yeah. I was in there for a robbery around 12 taxi drivers. And why was it so hard? It was on you all the time, and uh, there was plenty of screws about us. So you couldn't do what you wanted to do or anything, you know. You just, you know, you just had to play the game with them. I've known Roy from um, my early days in Bolstall Prison. We was in the riots in uh, Gartree, mm -hmm. and we were both up on the roof. And uh, he tried his strong arm uh, axe again with the big, big metal chimney, and that came crashing down. I think no one else could have done that, only him, you know. What was it like that riot? It started over people running to the fence. The screws or the wardens, as you call them, uh, uh, battering them, uh, it kicks off from there, you know. Uh, incidentally, Roy only came to Gartry because the killing, uh, uh, he, was, he was charged with murder in the, on the Isle of Wight. And he said, well, I want to get to Gartry because my cousin's up there, right. meaning me, you know. Yeah. It was about five o'clock in the morning and uh, he was murdered again, uh, incidentally, by about 15 screws and uh, he was roaring and shouting, I want Ray Mills uh, to come down and see, you know, anybody calmed me down, come up and got me from the show at five in the morning. We trudged through the snow to the gate and uh, me and him started laughing at each other, you know, because there was 15 screws around us all with dogs. And he's shouting, I didn't want to put a needle in me, you know. So I said, come on, boy, we want to get out of this snow, mate. Let's get in somewhere. <laughs> I was working in a club one day and a fighter came up to me and he told me he was at Maston with you. You and Albert Redding. Yeah. And this was sure, he says, you want to watch him when he comes out? I said, why? He said he busted the, the cell door with his fist. <laughs> Do you remember that, Roy, yeah. breaking that? Because you only the only remember man it. That. Yes, I'm the only man in prison history to go through the door from the inside. Yeah. Was that easy, Roy? No, I, in them days they had big, thick little chairs, you know. Yeah. So I picked that and ran the, uh, in the side of the prison door. They've got a cast iron rim holding a spire in. So I whack that and obviously it's cast on it, it breaks. So then there's that little hole. And so I whack that and that come out. So there's a little hole like that. So then they've got the thick metal plate in it. And I kept smashing at it with this big chair and it split right open. And I got out and the night watch looked up and run out because it was night time and run out and look, I was in the prison by myself. And there was a pal of mine called Freddie Sampson and he said, Roy, Roy, he said, go back to the cell, you'll get into trouble. I said, get into trouble, I said, I just smashed through the bloody door. He said, they're all coming in. So all the, all the screws were coming in, in alarm. So in them days, they had buckets of sand, and buckets of water in the, uh, in the toilets. So I was getting them and running them over to, on the full, full floor, on the top, over the centre. And as they were coming in, I was pouring buckets of water and buckets of sand. It was like Brighton Beach. <laughs> so all of a sudden, the, the, the governor blew the whistle. He said, sure, if you come down now and go in a cell, I will deal with you myself. I said, do you hear that, everybody? Bang, bang, yeah, Roy, yeah, Roy. So all I got, that's what I got, 14 days. Then when that, as soon as that was up, they moved me to another net called Canterbury. The question I'd like to ask is, when I was in prison, there's one thing that kept me going apart from my inner spirit and determination and my hatred for authority. It was like I had focused on my daughter at the time. She was born when I escaped from prison. I focused on her and I thought, you know, you, you feel like all the world's against you when them doors are shut and all, outside that cell door, they're all plotting and planning on you to, to bash you up or, or to give you grief or to stop your visits and all little silly psychological mind games. Roy went through all that as well. And I was wondering what kept Roy going? Was it his, just his natural human endeavor and spirit? Because. I think this needs to be said, um, they strip you of all your clothes, uh, you've got nothing on you, you're just completely naked, so therefore there you are, all you've got is your pride. And um, I'm a great believer, that's all you need to get through an hard situation. Now if you've sold your pride somewhere along the line, like a lot of people I know and Roy knows have in the past, and um, they've become scumbags or they've become whatever they want to become, they've sold that now, they haven't got it. Uh, Roy's still got his intact 100% and I've still got mine. 
and I think that's what kept me going. But I'd like to ask Roy what kept him going at these really crucial times of deep clinical depression, you know what I mean? I'd like to know what was Roy's inspiration. I was a bit of a rascal in there, so I was um, banged up most of the time. I just used to concentrate on doing exercise. I knew my wife was messing about, so I wrote her off. The kids were with her, so that was it. But I had a lovely friend called Ray Mills. He came all the way from Birmingham to, to see me. You know, some close friends come and visit me, that was all. So, no, being on your own and, and uh, in the prison, and I was banged up most of the time in a solitary confinement. I went to 18 different prisons. You know, I hated authority telling me what to do. When the screws used to open the door, there was about four or five of them there, you know, just in case I started. When Roy was in Broadmoor, I went to see him on average every three weeks. Uh, we've been friends all, all those years. Uh, if anything, uh, we said that, uh, you know, we'd both be in there together. Uh, obviously, Roy's more powerful than uh, a lot of people I know. He won a weightlifting contest in there. Uh, he was a very hard man, he was well respected and well liked. Roy Shaw's a great man. When I was in prison, I don't like to talk about prison really because it was a part of my life that I'm not really proud of, but um, I was down, like a lot of prisoners when you're in prison, it, 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 you know, you get very down. I was feeling sorry for myself and I actually read Roy Shaw's book, Pretty Boy, and I thought what I'm serving is tame in comparison to what Roy had to endure and what he went through, and he wouldn't let the system beat him. He is a very, very courageous man. We all know he's a hard man, you know, but there's a lot more involved with being a hard man and having courage. You know, he's a very courageous man because he, he stood up to the system and he actually beat the system. I know people say, how can you beat the system? He beat them because he wouldn't let the system beat him. And if you had a question that you were going to ask Roy, what would it be? I've wondered because he went into the army and I know that the army has a lot of rules and regulations, like prison has a lot of rules and regulations. And Roy, how did you cope with the, the army regime? How did you cope with the, uh, the officers and the NCOs screaming and shouting abuse at you? And that's when I found out I couldn't um, stand authority telling me what to do. And I used to get this adrenaline rush and I used to whack, whack the sergeants and, and whoever, whoever was ordering me about, you know. And so they stuck me in Colchester because there was, they was called staff sergeants in there. And so I was, all right, sergeant. He said, don't you call me sergeant, it's staff. Oh, uh, bang, whacked him. And then they, they banged me up all the time in there. Then they sent me to Germany out the way. Then I started rowing over there with the authority because they was telling me what to do. And then they stuck me in that house in Germany, gave me ECT on my head and everything. Then they sent me to a nut house in England, and then they slung me out in the army.